All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over this very entertaining email that was sent from a subscriber. This from a guy, sounds like he is in his early 30s, and he's going to share his story about how his relationship with his former girlfriend that he was with for like four to five years completely went to hell in a handbasket because he absolutely refused to marry her. You're going to see that this guy has very, very good reasons to have an anti-marriage view these days, particularly from his father and the divorce his father had from his mom, as well as other divorces his dad had. And also, that this guy made it abundantly clear when he started with his girlfriend, he's not interested in marriage. And this story definitely has its ups and downs and all that, and it definitely ends in a high note for this guy. And I'm doing this one, guys, for lots of reasons. You guys are going to find this story very entertaining, mark my words, but also there's very important lessons here. And one of them is, is that so many women, they think they can change a guy. They think if a guy says, I'm not interested in marriage, they may think he doesn't mean that. Or, I can change his mind. Or, they will put on the act like they don't mind, but then they pull the old bait and switch thing. That is a very important key to this story. Also, you're going to see how much a girl's family and her friends has an influence on her, particularly about the subject of marriage, especially when all her girlfriends are getting married and she's not. That kind of influence there, which is why I tell you guys, pay attention to who your girl hangs out with her friends because of the influence they have on her is a big thing. Also, about just how a man has to stick to his guns and the reality of how marriage is today, how men get just completely raked over the coals and divorce, etc., etc. A lot of very good things here. And there's other things I can't think of at the moment because I always freestyle when I do these videos, but I will certainly mention as I go along. So definitely, this is a very good one. Grab a drink. Last, last week, I had a fantastic story. This is yet another one. A lot of really good ones this week. So he says here, hello, SSM. I've been lurking on your channel for about a year and have agreed with most of the advice you give. Not everything, but who agrees 100% with anyone? On the core messages about female nature, we are in complete agreement. Unfortunately, they didn't have the internet resources that men have available today when I was growing up. It turns out that I was RP'd before I even heard the term, and it was my dad that taught me the lessons you ask him or you talk about. Don't get me wrong. He wasn't teaching me what to look out for. He was teaching me by making mistakes in real time. Guys, this guy's dad, <laughs> the amount of mistakes he makes, good freaking lord. And you'll see as I get into the story. I was seven years old when my parents got divorced. But I didn't find out why until I was in my mid-twenties. At least I know what my dad told me. He said that she filed for divorce because he didn't spend enough time with her. It didn't matter that he was working 10-hour shifts six days a week to provide for the family, and she was a stay-at-home wife. Mom got to keep the house, and Dad ended up paying her alimony and child support. <coughs> I can still remember that time in my life because it went from seeing my dad for a little, little while every day to two days a month, one day every other weekend. Right then and there, you heard that. He's busting his butt six hours a day, six six hour six days a week, ten hours a day, to provide, and she divorces him. She gets a house, a big alimony, and custody of the child, and he gets to see his dad a couple days a month now. That's the reward the father gets for busting his ass and trying providing for his family because she doesn't get to see him a lot. That in itself would make any man say, "I'm not doing this shit again." Well, watch what happens with his dad. But this guy telling the story also is learning. He's observing all this. When I got into high school and started playing sports, he did his best to come by to many games as he could. He had remarried a few years after he and mom split up to Lee and Teresa, but that marriage only lasted a few years. After everything he went through the first time around, he got married a second time just a few years later. Smack! First time shame on them, second time shame on him. But some guys never freaking learn. <clears throat> he never told me why they split up, but she was a typical barfly, so I suspect she cheated on him. My dad had been divorced twice before I was 18 years old, and even though he, he uh, fared better in court the second time around, it was mostly because he didn't have much for the course to take from him. 
After high school, I went to college on an academic scholarship, and while most of my friends were there to party, I worked a couple of part-time jobs so I could pay for my necessities, like car insurance and clothes. Good for you, man. Good for you. You're on your mission, then. Busting your butt to make money, take care of your own bills, be your own man, and going to school full-time. That's what I did, and I don't regret any of that. Uh, goes on. If you guys can hear the horn, I want to intermission here. It is the day before Thanksgiving when I'm filming this. It's 1 p.m. And I'm near grocery store down there, grocery store down there, a major discount retail over there, fast food restaurants over there, lots of uh, activity around here. You would think these boneheads would do all their shopping on the weekend, not the day before Thanksgiving, but instead they're all around out today. Fucking morons. But people are sheep. Don't No common sense. I did all my shopping over the weekend. My turkey's sitting there ready for me to cook tomorrow in the fridge. Everything's cool. But nobody thinks about that. And everybody's out here honking horns and being crazy and all that. It's been this way the entire time. I was, this is the third video I'm filming today. Anyway, I had to vent. Do your fucking shopping in advance. Don't do it before the day before Thanksgiving. Idiots. Anyway, he, where did I leave off? He was divorced by, twice by the time he was 18, blah, blah, blah. After high school, I got the job in, in college. I did have some fun in school, but I was mostly focused on getting my degree so I could get my career started. I was studying business management with a focus on accounting, and I didn't have anyone coming to my rescue if I didn't meet the terms of my scholarship. You learned responsibility young, my man. Very good. So I busted my butt and ended up graduating with honors. Neither of my parents had the chance to go to college, so they were really proud of me. That didn't stop them from sniping at each other that weekend, but it was mostly because my dad's third wife with him and my mom didn't like her. Now your dad is on to the third wife. Smack, smack, smack. What the hell is wrong with him? You know, you could have a guy that could be a smart guy, a lot of skills, a lot of abilities, but when it comes to women, he's a freaking idiot. I mean, just you can't feel bad for him at all when things go bad. Yes, you heard that correctly. His third wife. I was in my second year of school when he told me he was getting married again, and I asked him if he was stupid. He was pretty angry about that, but I watched him get the business end of the court twice and listened to him complain about how much his life sucked for years, and he was jumping back in the fire. I told him he was making a mistake, and he told me that I didn't understand. Bullshit. Come on here. A man can be alone. You don't need to have some chick. I think this guy's just a glutton for punishment. Now, you're going to see why this young man here has this attitude towards marriage. Uh, <laughs> His soon-to-be ex-wife was different. I think that it was the moment I realized my dad was an idiot. For whatever reason, it was like he couldn't be alone and didn't make any sense to me. After Teresa divorced him, it took a couple years, but I thought his life was going along pretty well. Emma had a 17-year-old daughter and was also a divorcee. I didn't know much about her, but that was the moment I promised myself that I was going to not going to follow my dad's footsteps. I told him that I wasn't going to be rude to her, but not to come complain to me if she turned out to be like the others. He wasn't very happy, but he had been down this road enough times to know better. You're damn freaking right. You know, you're saying your dad's an idiot, and he, he certainly, when it comes to women, his choice in women, keep thinking that the same, things will be different this time, in that department, yeah, he's an idiot. He could be a sharp guy in other areas of his life. A lot of guys I know that are very sharp guys, had things together, success, they're morons when it comes to women and relationships and dating. And no matter how many times you tell them, and these are the type of guys usually that don't like what I talk about. Well, that marriage lasted four years before he came home and found her in bed with her ex-husband. So by that time, I was 24. My dad had been married and divorced three times and lost two houses. When he called to tell me what happened, I told him I didn't want to hear it and hung up. It put a serious strain on our relationship, but he taught me some valuable lessons. The most important was to never get married. Any guys out there that have been married and divorced, you understand this quite well. Now, I wouldn't have been as hard on his dad, you know, because even though his dad is being a moron when it comes to these wives, his dad is his dad. And he has to show respect and all that. But I would not I would be like, look, Dad, I'm not going to listen to you complain about this. You brought this on yourself. First time, that's one thing. But two, three times? Oh, by the way, 
this isn't it for his dad with wives. He's like Henry the fucking eighth, except he's not having them beheaded. After school, it took nearly five months, but I found a job in my career and field and put everything I had into it. By the time I was 26, my life was looking pretty good. I had recently purchased a condo and had a good group of friends to spend time with. I wasn't against relationships, but I was dead set against the idea of getting married. Very good, and who can blame you? The first girlfriend I had after college was nice enough, but when she found out that marriage was not something I would entertain, we broke up. She ended up married a few years later, and we still keep in contact over social media. Her husband seems like a nice guy, and I'm happy for the two of them. Hopefully they can make it work, but I'm probably a bit too jaded to actually believe it. Look at the divorce rates. Flip a coin. I met my most recent girlfriend, Beth, a 26-year-old, when I was 27, and when it looked like we had a lot in common. <clears throat> we started dating monogamously after about five months. I'd never been shy about my opinions on marriage and was upfront with her in the beginning that I would be loyal to her, but I would never get married. So, guys, let's remember this. They, they got, they, they're officially a relationship, a couple, and he's making it abundantly clear, you all heard this, I'm not interested in getting married. You heard this. No confusion. She seemed to be okay with that, and over the next four and a half years, we had what I thought was a wonderful relationship. We didn't live together, but we did spend a lot of time together. In my mind, I didn't see anything wrong with our relationship, and she said she was happy. Well, notice he said, when they got together, she was 26. Fast forward in the future, four years, she's 30. What happens when a gal hits 30 or is getting close to 30? What do they think about? Uh Uh-oh, I don't have a ring on my finger. All my friends have rings on their fingers. All my friends are getting married. My mom's pressuring me. And we're off to the races. I'm not sure what she told her family about our relationship, but her mom and dad liked me and always treated me well when we visited them. It was over Christmas of 2018 that her mom asked us, when were we going to get married? We've been together for a little more than three years at that point. She was a bit shocked when I flat told her that we weren't going to get married because we were, there was nothing wrong with our relationship. It put a big, put a bit of a pall over the holiday. But Beth spent some time explaining to her parents my views on marriage and told them she was okay with the way our lives were right now. No, she said, okay. Didn't say great, okay. I got a lot of the same questions from my own parents because they, they really liked Beth. I let them know there was nothing wrong with our relationship and I wasn't interested in marriage. Of course, my mom was more concerned about grandchildren and my dad didn't understand why I didn't get wanted to get married. Oh yeah, he was engaged to his soon-to-be fourth wife. I guess even pain can't teach some people. Smack to your dad again. I'd love to know at this point in the future how many freaking wives his dad has had. Good lord. Well, newsflash, your life is your business. If you want to get married... Ever again, I mean, ever, because you didn't get married at all, you don't get married. And it's not your parents' business. It's not your mom's business. And, you're, and certainly not your dad's place to say. Good Lord. I think the first signs of problems came when a couple of our mutual friends that had been dating, that had been dating a few years announced that they were getting married. I'm not angry or bitter or broken because of past relationship. If that's the relationship they wanted to have, I was happy for them. The wedding was nice enough, and I have to agree with SSM on this. The best part of the wedding was the cake. It should be illegal for something that tastes that damn good. Yeah, well, I bet you didn't have five slices of cake like I typically do at a wedding, bro. I get that cake, and I'm out of there. It was a few days after the wedding when Beth and I were going to see a movie. She was being a little more quiet than usual, and when I asked if there was something wrong, she just said that she was thinking about how beautiful her friend was at the wedding. She's thinking a lot more than that, amigo. I can't remember what I said, but it was something to the effect that they spent a lot of money for a few hours of fun that was probably going to end in divorce in a few years. She never said anything, but I'm pretty sure she didn't like it. Sometimes I say what's on my mind without thinking about it, but but that can only be me. Dude, I speak my mind all the time, and it does ruffle feathers. But you know what? I'd rather be around people that speak their mind and are truthful and direct than BS and sugarcoat and all that. And if people don't like that about you, then they don't have to be around you. 
It was another seven months when Beth told me that her friend was getting married. Uh-oh, more friends getting married. You can see where this is going, gentlemen. I remember telling her that I hoped it worked out for them, and I let the topic drop. It was pretty clear that it was something she was thinking about, and I think that was the first moment that I was starting to doubt how accepting Beth was of not getting married. Remember, this is the girl that he told from the get-go. No marriage. It was a few months after her friend's wedding that everything came to a head. We've been together for a little more than four and a half years. I was 31, and my life felt pretty complete. I had a great career that I enjoyed and a woman that I was in love with. I didn't see any reason to fix something that wasn't broken. I don't know if it was because Beth had recently turned 30. Ding, ding, ding. Or her two best friends were married. Ding, ding, ding. And constantly asking her where we were going to tie the knot. But something had changed in her. We were having dinner at her place in mid-July 2019 when she asked me if I would ever consider reconsider getting married. I think this guy's been pretty clear about this whole thing this entire time. Reconsider? What? Change? We have a great thing going. Right? And you want to screw that up? Look at my dad, I'd say. I loved her and I was in love with her, but I told her there was nothing wrong with our relationship. She asked that if we were in love, what would be wrong with getting married? Uh, how much time do you have, sweetheart? I asked her how being married would be any different than what we had other than putting me in a significant legal disadvantage. She seemed a bit taken back and asked if I, if I thought that she would do anything to hurt me. I told her the truth. Yeah, how many times have guys heard that? Come on here. No, but I asked her again what the difference would be between what we had and a ring and a title. She said she wanted to spend her life with me, and I told her she already had that. I had no intentions of going anywhere, and there was nothing wrong with our relationship as it was. Good for you, bro, for sticking to your guns. I'm sure at that point you realize, you, you realize and recognize this could be it. I could lose this chick that I'm in love with and have a great thing going with. But you stuck to your guns. A lot of guys would have caved at this point. That takes a lot, okay? And remember... If you're a success, if you're a guy that has his shit together, you have success, you're happy, you're comfortable who you are, you take care of yourself physically, you got some money, you can get chicks. So if one doesn't like how your relationship is or how it's going, fine. You'll find somebody else. This, of course, is your relationship, guys. If you're not a relationship guy, who gives a shit? I reminded her that I was completely honest with her from the beginning about my views on marriage, and I didn't think it was fair for her to try and change the rules now. She said she understood, bullshit, and let the topic drop. But I knew her well enough to know that she wasn't okay with it. She wasn't okay with it, and it ain't over. Guaranteed. Now, guys, when things don't work in that department, what usually happens with the girls? They get their friends involved. And here we go. Uh, we were at her best friend's house for a cookout a few weeks after that, and we were all having a good time. At least until her friend cornered me in the house and asked why I was leading Beth on and that if I was a real man, that I would marry her. I'd say, number one, mind your own fucking business. My relationship and Beth is our business and ours is, that's it, our own. Number two, do not corner me. And number three, kiss my fucking ass. I'm not sure if I was more pissed or shocked. Honestly, it was probably equal measures of both. I told her my relationship was none of her business and then went outside and told Beth what happened before leaving to go home. Beth called me a few times trying to say that her friend didn't mean anything by what she said, but I told her that I wouldn't be going back to their house. Uh, her friend met exactly what she said. Her, her friend knew exactly what she was doing and I'm sure Beth knew her friend was doing this. I had no idea if this was completely from her friend or has something the two of them had talked about in private. But I'll be damned if anyone is going to try to shame me in doing something I don't want to do. Yes, good for you, bro. I think that was the moment our relationship started to fall apart. Dude, your relationship was already crumbling before this. The next couple of months, I was starting to see a distance that had never been there before. By August, I, it was clear the whole marriage topic was something that was bothering Beth. Remember, she's 30 now. All her friends are getting married. The parents, the whole nine yards. This is all... 
It's absurd. It's ridiculous. You got a great thing going. Why, why screw it up? Right? But the friends will do it. Because remember, by and large, most people, most people, men and women, are sheep. And they're going to do what everybody else is doing. But women are especially sheep when it comes to their friends. And they got to be just like what their friends are doing and all that. Have their magical day and all that stupid shit. It was the beginning of October and then it all fell apart. Beth had come over to my place for dinner and I could tell she was in a bad mood. I asked her what was wrong and she started crying and said she wanted to be married and how much she loved me. But if, if I wasn't going to marry her, she couldn't stay in the relationship. There you go. She's going to ruin this whole thing. So this is her last thing, okay? All else has failed, so I'm going to ball my eyes out and say, if you don't marry me, you don't put a ring on me, it's over. She's going to sacrifice the great thing so she can have her freaking title and that ring and be like everybody else. Well, how do you think that gamble of hers pans out? I guess I wasn't surprised after watching her the last few months. I told her that I loved you for nearly five years. I've been loyal to you and we have a good life. And now you're telling me that if I don't marry you, you're going to break up with me. She said she wanted to be with me, but her friends and her parents, ding, 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 were telling her that I was only leading her on and that if I really loved her, I would marry her. What a load of shit. She's now twisting it around. It's your fault if things go south because you won't marry me. Oldest trick in the book. I was pissed. I've been completely honest from the very beginning. Yes, you have, my man. And we all heard it in this story here. I told her I was sorry that my love over the last five years wasn't enough for her and that a ring and a piece of paper were more important than a dedicated partner. Then she made my brain melt. She asked, are you really going to throw away our relationship over something so small? She's the one throwing away the relationship over this crap. The words were out of my mouth before I even had time to think what I was saying. I was pissed. I told her, sorry, I don't negotiate with terrorists. I guess I could have worded it more gently, but I don't like being given an ultimatum about something I've been clear about from the start. It went over about as well as you would expect. She started crying and ran out of the house. Shocker. And I bet you she expected you to come running out after her, just like in the freaking movies. And that would have been the end for you. If you would have caved to this whole thing, do you think if you would have caved and gone along with it, you know, letting her ultimatum work, I guarantee the dynamics of your relationship would have been done. Because all of a sudden, the guy that she was attracted to and respected, all of a sudden caved. And if you chased after her running when she was running away crying... I, I'm sorry, I'll marry you. She would have lost respect for you. I guarantee at the time she, she would disagree with that, but she would have. But not our man here. Good job. Of course, over the next month, I was getting all kinds of nasty calls and messages from our mutual friends, whom I eventually had to block, and that was the end of 2019. That's predictable. Guys, if you're in a situation like this and you're getting nasty messages or emails or whatever you want to call it, for people that in your social circle and like this, cut them off. Better to be alone than have assholes like this trying to tell you how to live your life. I love Beth and we had a good life together. For whatever reason, it wasn't enough. Maybe I'm too strict on my position. No, you're not. But having watched my dad get destroyed in court three times, I can't see any reason to take that risk. I've worked too hard in my life to just give half of my stuff away. I'm still waiting to see if his fourth divorce, but I guess things are okay for now. So that all happened three years ago, and my life has been going along pretty well. Of course it is, bro, because you are a guy that, from the get-go, it sounds like you've been on your grind. College, after college, all that, and you know what you want, and you go for it. And you don't let anybody push you around. Of course you recovered. I did get a call from Beth earlier this year, and it was nice hearing her voice. She wanted to apologize for how she was acting and was catching me up, catching up with me in life and told me that her best friend, the one that said I wasn't a real man because I wouldn't marry her, recently got divorced. <laughs> she didn't go into any details why, but it doesn't matter. Beth did ask if I was in a relationship and when I told her I wasn't, asked if we could try again because she missed me. 
Oh, hell no, honey. I wish you well and all. We had a, I have fond memories of our past. But oh, hell no, we're not getting back in a relationship. I'm not doing that again. You had your chance. You blew it. And by the way, guarantee you, he took her back down the road. He'd be going through the same bullshit all over again. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie and say I don't miss her. I do. I told her as much, but I reminded her that she let her friends and family destroy a relationship that we had when I was clear from the start that I wasn't going to get married. I wished her well, and that was the last time I heard from her. I haven't bothered with any more relationships, and I started with some new hobbies. Good for you, ma'am. I notice you're happy, and you don't feel empty because you don't have a girlfriend or a wife or anything like that. My mom thinks I'm an idiot for throwing away the relationship I had with Beth. And I think it's the first time in my life that my parents agreed about something. Maybe I am. I guess time will tell. But my life feels pretty complete right now. The end. Bro, that was a great story. And that was a really great story right here before Thanksgiving. And I'm proud of you for sticking to your guns. Okay? I'm sure it wasn't easy. And I'm sure maybe once or twice you're thinking, mm, I don't want to lose this girl. But no, you knew in your soul, this is a mistake. I'm not going to go through the shit that my dad went through and other people went through good for you. You do not. Guys, this time of the year, now that we're in the holidays, Thanksgiving's tomorrow, you're going to start seeing all these movies, holiday movies, Christmas movies, whatever you want to call them, about people being alone at Christmas. They find that special someone. It's all a crock, okay? If you're a guy on his grind, on his purpose, he's got good things in his life, his friends, his family, family not like a wife, reasons to get up every day, something you're pursuing, something you're trying to improve, you don't need this, okay? But so many people are sold on this whole thing. You got to get married. You got to do it by this age. You got to have kids by this age. You got to have the house by this age. You got to do this, this, and this because that's what society tells you. And everybody else is going to pressure everybody else to do that because nobody wants to be, most people Most people don't want to be the outlier. <clears throat> they want to be like everybody else. And the thought of being different scares the bejesus out of them. So how easily this guy's girlfriend in the past was pressured by her friends and her parents and didn't want to be different, you know, look what happened. They had a great relationship and she screwed it up. So for this guy here, keep doing what you're doing. Focus on your career, enjoying your life, doing what you want to do. And whatever happens, happens. End of story. But notice he's not depressed and lonely and all that. Be no, he's doing great. And I'm going to bet you that same girl that cornered him and gave him shit and said he wasn't a real man for marrying her, now she's divorced. That's hilarious, right? And I bet you now that she's divorced, if those two are still friends, she's probably trying to keep his ex, Beth, single so she has someone to be single with. Anyhow, guys, that'd be a great one here. And again, very important about the whole bait and switch thing. When women turn 30 and they freak out about that, sticking to your guns. And for all that sacred and holy bro, I hope like hell your dad is not divorced for the fourth time and onto the fifth freaking marriage. For God's sakes, this guy needs my work. He needs channels like mine. Oh my God. This is something there that he just can't be alone. But guys, don't be like his freaking dad. But talk about a crazy example there. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And uh, happy Thanksgiving for tomorrow because I'm filming this on Thanksgiving Eve pretty late tonight. And also, guys, if you got a great story like to share, by all means, email to me strong successful mail at gmail.com just give me some time to get to it. i definitely will later on down the road and be sure to like the video share it with your friends and subscribe and i'll catch you next time